president and an employee in this community, how can I and others like me support economic growth? What can we as citizens and as uh, folks who uh, live here or um, function here, how can we help it to thrive? What can we do? So from a Chapel Hill perspective, participate. Uh, and there's so many ways to do that. We have a council committee on economic sustainability that meets the first Friday of every month. They talk about future issues that uh, will help uh, and benefit economic development. Uh, be there when you can. Uh, express your interest to your elected officials and uh, tell them that you would like, you know, what your interest is. Um, but I think that uh, being a part of a voice in the community is a critical, important point to how we arrived here today and having those voices continuing into the future will continue to help us find success. I, I appreciate that question. Um, I, we have in Carboro, and I know we all do, have very strong uh, buy local, be local, shop local uh, value to our community. So I just reinforce that, that, that you, can't, you can't say it enough. And tell your friends, be that voice, be that storyteller. Like, like such a great storyteller. Be that storyteller about what a great community is, when folks ask you how great it is to live here. You know, be be that advocate for our community and um, and spread the spread the love, right? I love uh, I believe this. I think we have that power. Uh, we can't continue to look at just the staff of the channels of the municipalities or our elected officials. Uh, and I just want to underscore that. What else? Uh, Bill. Uh, Katie, uh, my wife would like to be here, I think, because one of the frustrations she's had for the last 50 years is going across 40 to shop and looking at Kendra out to, to shop. And she doesn't see any of these big stores or high, high price stores or good long-term stores <laughs> around the Chapel Hill area. And I'm wondering why Walmart is just over the line. I'm wondering why all of those places are just over the line and Tandra Outlet is just over the line. So if somebody could help me explain to her when I go home tonight, <laughs> <laughs> I would appreciate it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, this is a hot potato. You don't recognize it? <laughs> um, so we lose, as Aaron can tell you, about 35% of our uh, retail sales, uh, unfortunately. It's kind of hard to reverse that trend now that New Hope and Patterson Place and the streets at South Point are there. Uh, we also, no matter what we try to convince ourselves with buy local and shop local campaigns, uh, consumerist, uh, which means we either follow a store brand or a name brand of a product, uh, and a lot of those aren't available here. Uh, and so it's really hard to look back and recapture that. Uh, we even look and see what's happening in North Chatham, and it's quite frustrating to me. They've got well over a half million square feet of commercial space and another half million in, in title, uh, which just takes more and more away from us. Uh, and when you talk to people about developing retail, um, there are very, very few locations that are preferable to some of the very stores you're talking about that are already commercial in our market. And so it's, it's a really difficult path. Um, you know, we've tried, we have had limited retail growth, you know, but we look at who we are as a community. My favorite story is Fido. We recruited Fido to come to Chapel Hill from Carborough, great beginning. They got to Chapel Hill, started growing, uh, and in 2011-12, they wanted to own their business and grow in Chapel Hill. There was zero opportunity for that to happen. So they went to Raleigh and Cary and opened additional stores so that they could grow their business. Those are the very stores that we proclaim that we want in our community, but we don't always provide the opportunity for them to thrive here. And so making sure we're doing that um, so that when there are those opportunities, they can stay here and they can grow here is important. Um, but we're, we're sort of on a path, and it's kind of hard to reverse that path there. You know, we believe with RAM we will see positive change occur at University Place. We've pledged a partnership with them to do whatever we can to help them find a core of retail that makes that a strongest center, uh, and we're doing that. I mean, if you haven't paid attention, in 2007, 
For all of you who lived here in 2007, you could do donuts in Rams Plaza and no one would notice. And now I challenge you to go find a parking place at lunch. So we're capturing more. We're not giving ourselves credit for that. You know, Eastgate has stepped up its game, and so I think we're seeing a refinement in our retail, uh, um, and there's a lot of changes going on in retail, um, but I think we're probably on the best path that we can. We're not going to reverse the past. All right, uh, we've got to wrap it up. Aaron, do you have any final thoughts or reflections that you'd be open to sharing? It's, uh, it, it feels like a new day. And it somewhat feels like a new day. It's been 18 years I've been at the chamber. Um, and lots of efforts, but to see these projects, the construction is happening. Now in our community, we have a little bit of macabre. We are sometimes repulsed by what we desire. That's what, that's what, that's, 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 that's So we know that building dense on transit corridors is the way to go, and then we build it, and then we, we re recoil from it a little. I think that's what happened at University, at, um, well, the Berkshire is an example. Another example would be along uh, 54, East 54. So I think this community does it, and then we recoil, and then we do some more, and then we recoil. So what I would like to encourage you all, we have to tell the story accurately, that we are not, this is not out of control growth when these apartment complexes are coming up. It is the kind of housing that folks are looking for in this market. It is wonderful to have local ownership of the mall. It's not owned by a real estate investment trust anymore. It is by humans that we know and that have experience in this community. And that's now the case with Northwood Raven. It's the case with Grubb. It's the case with Ram. I think we're very fortunate when we had with, with Roger Perry and the things that he built in this community. We had a local person who cared. So that is as optimistic as, I mean, that's the best scenario that you can have to have folks that care and are from this community. And now with the leadership we have in downtown with Matt, it's clear that these three folks know what they're doing. We are turning the corner toward very positive growth. It is now intentional. So really good things, I think, are happening uh, in this market with respect to commercial growth. Steve, it's wonderful to hear you think this is going to be the best year. That means that there's some things you're not allowed to tell us that are coming. That's very exciting. <laughs> um, and our university is reinvesting in our downtown in some extraordinary way. What Duke has done for Durham has been transformative. And our university knows that that front door is their ability to recruit and retain talent and students. And I think we'll see even greater effort from our university in our Franklin Street and our downtown. So I am very bullish on what's going on. I've not always felt that way. It has sometimes felt like a real slog. Um, but just like when you do a roller coaster, there's a lot of this like click, 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 and then there's the wee. So it is hopeful that, um, and so the last piece I'll say is this pivot. We spent a lot of our economic development time getting projects approved. I think we're now pivoting to now spend a lot of our economic development time recruiting and retaining tenants and industry and businesses that will fill these spaces. So less time arguing with a town council on getting the project approved, now more time, I think, working on uh, getting great tenants to the good projects we have coming. Thanks. Okay, a few <coughs> final, final thoughts before we adjourn. First, um, please put your hands together for all our speakers today. to thank you, just a little Chapel Hill toffee. <laughs> um, okay, at 3.15 today, tune in to WCHL 97.9 The Hill. Aaron's going to do a live interview with Aaron Keck to recap what did we learn today, what are the key takeaways and ahas. So you can tune in through the internet, um, streaming live, or turn the dial on the radio to 97.9. Um, our next forum is Coffee with the Candidates, and the date is changed, so please make note. It's now Wednesday, September 4th at the Siena, and registration is open. Uh, Want to go to China? <laughs> we are accepting people to apply to go to China. Yep, Helen is going. Um, this is like a four or five star discounted group travel experience. It's awesome. Talk to Justin. Justin, raise your hand in the back if you're interested in learning more. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my colleagues who helped me today, Justin on the, the presentation, Vanessa on all the overall event coordination. Rebecca is in the back. Rebecca, would you wave? If you are not a member of the chamber, now is the time to join and uh, make the most of it. Members get these sort of events for free. It's a lot of benefits, so talk with Rebecca about that. Um, Again, thank you sponsors. If you're interested in doing an event like this at the theater, this is open for rental. Any other updates for the good of the order? Can you, am I missing anything?
No. Thank you all for your message. Okay, we are adjourned.